Hey folks, before we get into this video, make sure you check out my digital store where I have some amazing products that will help you retouch better and retouch faster, like my Retouching Essentials Pack that has 14 amazing actions and also my skin tone lots that will help you color grade your beauty images real quick. And I also have something for people that shoot outdoors. That is my creative color lots. You guys are definitely going to love them. So head over to my digital store and check those out. And also you can download the freebies that I have there and an image or two images that you can use to practice your retouching. So yeah, let's get straight into today's video. Now it is crazy, absolutely crazy that I haven't done a retouching overview of this image because I thought I had and it's going to be quite a lengthy video, but let's just get straight into the retouching overview of this image. So this is the before of this particular image. And while we're going over the retouching overview, I'm going to show you guys a few things that I probably could have done differently. And um, that's something, sometimes you retouch an image and you think, oh, it looks so good. Then you come back to it after a while and there are like so many things that you would actually change if you were to retouch it again but you know that's how we do we live and we learn so this is straight out of the camera and this image was shot a while ago um these are the scents down here with my 100 mm which you guys know is like my favorite beauty lens right now and iso 100 as usual 160th of a second which is why i stick to between 160th of a second and 1 200th of a second when i'm shooting beauty in the studio so yeah and this is my capture one edit now i wanted to go for an image that was really really i would say bright and shiny especially because of the hair at first i didn't know where to go but you know that's another video that i'll make um in the future um a few things you should do before retouching or what you should do before retouching every image right now for this image i didn't really know exactly where to go but i had an image in mind that i wanted to achieve and one of it was because of the hair i wanted the hair to stand out and shine this image was lit with uh one light as you guys can see in the eyes i'm just going to zoom in so you guys can see that oh sorry about that <laughs> so yeah it was i'm um, sure one light you guys look up here you can see that light and if you look under her right here you can see a reflector to bounce the light back but there was something else i did with this image and that is i put a fill light right here on the side so that the hair could stand out and the hair could really shine and it could separate my subject from the background not fill light a rim light i mean so it could separate my subject from the background so now in capture one what did we do as usual i don't do too much in capture one i left my white balance the exact same way it was as you guys can see but what i did was that i pulled my highlights all the way down i pulled my shadows up a bit because of the hair i wanted the hair to still have a shine i pulled my blacks up a bit obviously still because of the hair i wanted to remove the uh, reduce the blacks in the image and i pulled my highlights all the way back so if we do this you guys can see pulled it all the way back now this is something that i would actually doing moderation again if i was to retouch this image and that is because of this hot spot on her nose but you know as i time i was retouching i didn't really care about that and another thing i dragged my um i dragged my shadows in to four just to add a little bit of contrast to the image so it's on three now um yeah it's not going to stick to four but yeah to four so i could add some contrast to my image and that's about what i did in um capture one that's all that's all i did in capture one and i moved this image into photoshop for the skin retouching so let's jump straight into photoshop to see how i retouched this image so now we are in photoshop and you guys can see a lot of layers that i have right here on the right hand side if you don't know about retouching this is where all your layers are and you uh, advice to work on layers independently in Photoshop when you're retouching so you can retouch non-destructively and you can always come back to something that you've done before so now this is where our final image is and we're just going to go all the way down to the first one if you just want everything to disappear and you just want the first layer to show all you have to do is hold alternate on PC or option on Mac and click the last layer and everything goes away so the first thing we did in Photoshop was to remove that line that is right there and that is the easiest thing to do all you have to do if i duplicate this is just click um pick your lasso this is lasso tool right yeah your lasso tool just draw just a random shape and fill content away click okay and that's just going to 
go away. But make sure it's not this big, but just select exactly what you need to take out. And it just take that, takes that command or control D to take out the, what do you call them? And I can't remember what to call them, but just take that out. Um, yeah, so that's it. Really easy to do that. And that's what we did here. We took that out. Then the next thing I did was basic frequency separation to remove a lot of the blemishes from her face. So if we zoom in, you can see the before and the after, before and the after. I always use basic frequency separation to remove blemishes from my subject's face, especially when they are dark skin. And the reason is because of the variation in color in our skin we'd have melanin and um if you're just going to use the clone stamp tool or the spot healing tool you're going to move colors around quite a lot when you're retouching dark skin that's one thing i've noticed but if you have a better tip for me then you know i'm all ears i'm op open to learning um new stuff so that's why i did right here my basic frequency separation if you want my frequency separation actions i have them out for free just go to my digital store i'll put a link in the description below you can download frequency separation actions for free and um, also my eyes and teeth whitening action we'll get back we'll get to that later so now that we are done with that the next thing i did was micro dodge and burn now i have a new video that i put out recently on micro dodge and burn if you want to learn micro dodge and burn then definitely definitely go check out that video i explained everything in depth and how i use my invert check layer to see all the um variations on our skin as you guys can see how it is so that's the before and this the after see how smooth that looks before and after it looks really nice so if you want to learn everything about um micro dodge burn and how it works and how you use the invert check layer with it definitely go check out our video i'll put a link in the description below so that is what i did right here which is micro dodge and burn and after that i put everything together in one layer so i merged everything i done in one layer and also my frequency separation that i did at first i put into one layer too because i was going to i was going to run out of frequency separation action and i did not want it to interfere with the first one that i ran so that's exactly what i did created a stamp visible layer to do that all you have to do is hold command option shift and e which is control alternate shift and e on pc and after that i created a new frequency separation action um run a new frequency separation action to open my new frequency separation layers to work on the skin again after doing micro dodge and burn what i typically do is i run my frequency separation again because micro dodge and burn does not smoothen out the skin as much as i would want with the amount of time that i am working with it now if you want to use micro dodge and burn all through then that's fine if you want to use frequency separation all through that's fine i prefer to put both together and there are some places that um, micro dodge and burn kind of like desaturates or yeah you know it, it causes it causes a color shift and um instead of fixing it by just using like normal brush what i do is i create my um frequency separation layers again and i work on my low layer with my mixer brush tool if you want to learn about how that works i have a ton of frequency separation videos um that i put out over the past few years all you have to do is just type frequency separation on youtube with prince mason and you see all those videos that i've put out watch the recent one you really enjoy that so all i did with that was just blend out the skin a little more now there's something that i missed that i wanted to tell you guys when i did micro dodge and burn just going to turn all the layers off i removed the contour that was on my subject's face now the reason why i did that was because this contour just makes her look boxy and i did not want that i wanted her to look really nice i wanted her features to be really round and soft and the contours just made her look boxy as you guys can see right so i had to zoom out so you guys can see that very well i'm just zooming a little bit more so what i did was that i just used my dodge and burn to take that out because everything in a subject's face is shadows and highlights and you have to you know treat it like that and that way you'd be able to shape your subject's face the exact way that you want it so we're just going to go back up now that i'm done explaining that the next thing i did was global dungeon burn and global dungeon burn is my absolute favorite the last video i put out was how you are doing global dungeon burn wrong and the uh, best and the right way i think you should do it definitely check that video out too and after I global dodge and burn i did my 
micro dodge and burn again but i doubt i did anything here you guys can see it's just empty and um, what i always do is create two micro dodge and burn layers and work on both of them separately um in case one of them is not doing as much as i want it to do so yeah but with my micro dodge and burn right here i did not do anything so i'm just going to delete that and take that out now the next thing i did was i worked on her lips as you guys can see her lips were kind of like patchy um had some patches here all these places didn't look good and i wanted it to look close to perfect you know so what i did was you know just filled lips out right and i am yet to create a tutorial on how to retouch lips and the reason is because i have not figured out an easy way to make this happen once i do that i am definitely going to put that tutorial up, trust me so now i'm just going to dive into these layers and i'll show you exactly what i did the first thing i did was i used the pen tool to draw a path around her lips and i changed my path which you can do here so you guys can see i have my path here so what i did was that i changed it into a selection so if i just make selection and click okay you guys can see that selection around the lips so i'm going to deselect now command d or control d on pc and what that helped me to do was just you know draw a sharp line around her lips by using the clone stamp tool so all i did was just clone and fix around her lips right and we had this which was fine but you know she still had a lot of issues inside the lips and around the lips you know you can see some patches there so that was the next thing i did fixed the lips but now that i'm looking at it you guys can see i made like a tiny mistake out here but you know that's fine i think i tried to fix it later but it's okay we tried to make images perfect but yeah <laughs> um and after that i worked on coloring the lips right i changed the lip color i wanted to and um, I changed the lip color a little bit, but what I just did was I picked the brush, which is B on your keyboard, hold option to sample around um, a color around her lips, and I just painted all over the lips. So if I take my blend mode all the way to normal, you guys can see how I just painted all over her lips, and I now changed my blend mode to saturation and that just blends the colors in and you can actually now see the lips right and that worked for me but I wanted to go a step further because I wanted the lips to look darker so what I did was that I still took the same paints that I had I duplicated the layer and um, I reduced my changed my blend mode to multiply and reduce my opacity and that just makes you know it just adds some really dark contrast to the lips then i created a hue saturation adjustment layer and clipped it to this last layer that i worked on all you have to do is hold option and hover in between both layers and you can clip the layer above to the layer below now the reason why i'm doing that is because i just want this hue saturation layer to work or affect the layer underneath it and nothing else so i just clipped it to this layer and after that i added some highlights some shine to her lips and this is a little bit complicated but let me break it down for you guys so all i did was paint white all over my subject's lips right and you guys are going to see it very soon so if we go to blend options just right click on that layer and go to blending options you guys can see that i used the blend if layer so if i take all this all the way up you can see or all the way back to the black parts right here or the dark parts of my image you guys can see that it's just white now if i pull this in you can see that the white disappears right and i just want it to be somewhere like here but you know still at this point it is just too sharp and too harsh so all you have to do is, is hold um option and you can just separate this but i'm just going to pull this away from the dark parts and you guys can see i have applied a shine if you want to learn about blend if there are like a lot of tutorials out there i can't get into it in this video but it's something that i do not use all the time but it comes in handy once in a while um you can dodge and burn with blend if there's so many things you can do with it but i personally just use it once in a while for specific tasks like this one so and click OK and that is how I added some shine to her lips and we are done with the lips the next thing I did 
was I started working on color grading my image. So I'm just going to zoom out now. So for color grading, the first thing I always do is work with my levels and I just pull in my blacks and pull in my whites. I spoke about this for Dodge and Burn in the last video that I put up. Definitely check that out. And this is just going to add some contrast to your image, right? And after adding contrast, I ran my rich tones action to make the image look richer, like the whole colors. This is in my retouching essentials pack. Um, if you guys have it, all you have to do is go to your actions panels and run the rich tones, um, action, which is it. There it is. Rich tones. And after that, I ran even skin. As you guys can see, it just evened out as skin and everything looks like the same color right now or everything is the same color right now. The whole of her skin. That is my even tones action in my retouching essentials pack. The only way you're going to get it is if you actually get my retouching essentials pack. Thank you for getting it and supporting this channel. And after that, I used selective color to just work on her skin tone because I wanted it to look a bit warmer. So what I did, if you come to selective color, go to reds was I dragged my yellows up a little bit and I added some science to her skin by pulling my cyan's up, right? But just make sure it's in the red channel. And that's because um, your skin toes are typically, you know, reds between reds and yellows. So, yeah. But in this situation, just reds. After that, micro dodge and burn again. And this was to fix the top part of her lip here that had an issue. So, let's see the before and the after. So, I just wanted to fix that part. Um, I didn't fix it well, but, you know, it's, it's fine doesn't have to be perfect even though we always want it to be perfect right so yeah micro dodge and burn and then i worked on her hair can you say her hair five times ten times her hair her, i'm just going to stop messing around so i worked on the hair and um the first thing i did was i used selective color to change the color of the hair right so what i did was that i went to work with my cyan's so you guys can see i added some cyan's to this but in cyan's not in red right and that's the amazing thing about selective color that you can select the colors that you want to work on and, and that's just beautiful so um i just messed around with this till i got the value that i wanted and i also went to my blue channel and messed around with my blues till i got you know my the subject's hair to be or the model's hair to be um, at the point where I loved it and I created a hue saturation adjustment layer to remove a lot of the colors from the background. So all I did was just desaturate the master. So I just reduced the saturation all the way down and I created, uh, uh, obviously when you create the hue saturation adjustment layer, it comes with a layer mask and you guys know how layer mask works. Um, white reveals and black hide. So in this situation, I just painted black over my subject and her hair so that, um, this desaturation does not affect my subject, right? And after that, I ran my eyes and teeth whitening action. Oh, by the way, when I worked on the hair, I noticed that it was affecting her eyes. So I went in and, um, you know, just used the, created a new layer mask and I just painted black over her eyes to hide the effect there. And then eyes and teeth whitening action. I'm just going to zoom in so you guys can see it. I have this action of free. You can definitely, definitely go download it right now. And after that, I did some color to her hair again, the hair by just dragging my saturation up and painting white over my subject's hair um, in the layer mask. Always remember when you're painting like that, just paint on the layer mask and just reveal the color. Then after that, I reduced the general saturation of the image, especially the reds. I think it was just the reds. Okay. Yeah, it was just the reds. So I reduced the saturation of the reds and maybe the yellows too, because that is where the, like I said, the skin tones are typically between reds and yellows. So I reduced the saturation because I did not want her skin to be too saturated, right? And after that, I did liquefy, which was just to pull my subject's face in a little bit. Now, as you guys can see, the lips aren't popping as much as they are popping with my liquefy, and that's because um, I touched <laughs> the lips again it wasn't the exact same way i did it the first time and you know i like the shine that it has now better than you know the shine that i had before but yeah that's about it that is how i got this image from let's zoom in here to here right there so this is the before and this is the after 
this is the before and this is the after anyways if you watch this video to this point i want to say thank you definitely give this video a thumbs up and if you want to see more videos like this subscribe to my channel and yeah comment below let me know if there's something that you'd want me to do or talk about and let me know if you love the image and how i retouched this particular image thank you so much i'll see you guys in the next video have an amazing day peace